oriental blossoms doing what comes natural. They all want to be in films, of course. This is a Hong Kong night school for little starlets learning to twinkle, twinkle. Doe-eyed, demure products of a delicate porcelain, cow-towing world, docile and meek. In the next door classroom, mixing it with student actors, a few practical girls who are more likely to succeed. For Asian impact today, every fragile flower has got to know how to fight. With so much women's lib in the air, it's easy for a chap to lose his head. Another Chinese who's light on his feet and gets ahead, the last of the multi-millionaire movie moguls, Run Run Shaw. You have heads being chopped off on camera. Mm -hmm. You have entrails being pulled out of bodies on camera. What do you do for an encore? Well, <laughs> well we just do it. <laughs> Run Run Shaw sits in this remote corner of the Commonwealth doing what Hollywood would love to be doing, making a film every week of the year and a profit at the end of it. With his brother, Run Me, he controls the world's largest privately owned studio and cinema circuit and an annual income of a hundred million pounds. Studios around the world decline and close, but last year his assembly line produced 52 ferocious films. People always want more. And when we first started this sort of play films, we have no blood. And people say it's not uh, exciting enough. We're putting more blood. And then the, 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 the audience wants more, we put more blood. And after so many years, they get a little tired of the blood, so we reduce. And I think in the very near future, we'll cut out all the blood and just action. Just fighting? Just fighting. See, I've never seen such fights, and they go on almost interminably, don't they? Don't the audiences ever get tired of this? I mean, they know the outcome. Obviously, the man, the man in black is going to win, and the men in white are going to be dead. Well, I think uh, people all over the world are like that. For instance, in America, they used to produce uh, Western pictures, and they make something like two or three hundred westerns a year and for 20, 30 years. And uh, I never heard that they are tired of the western. All the westerns are the same. I can guess what the people want better than most of the other producers. Uh, I guess wrong many times, but I guess a lot of times right. One of Run Run's right guesses. After occupying Asian cinemas, he's thinking of adding London to his chain of conquered audiences. Well, we watch westerns, so how about these easterns? We can take spaghetti cowboys from Italy, so why not chop suey swordsmen from China? Shaw's takings are also going through the roof. This is where he produces blood, sweat and profits. His Asian Hollywood ignores television and does phenomenally well out of that disappearing product, cinema audiences. Figuring how much he earns from this film factory is like trying to follow one of his movie plots. But sure, shockers earn double their production costs before leaving Hong Kong on their way to Chinese audiences around Southeast Asia, while reticent Run Run backs into public gaze. Shaw's movie town covers 70 acres around the Shaw House executive block with 10 vast studios and 15 lots where they film in Shaw scope to be seen in Shaw's 141 theatres. Inside his guarded movie town, a thousand employees are today making 27 films. Average production time, three months. Shaw's silly sagas do have a certain sameness. Despite titivation by elderly lady labourers, audiences recognise the same old sets used again and again. 
And since Hong Kong is such a tiny, crowded colony, there are few outside locations. But for the water margin, Shaw's most expensive sword play so far, with a budget of £200,000 and 80 shooting days, the company's ventured out to the new territories for a couple of weeks, bringing lots of stars and 400 extras. Some of the magic goes forever when flighty eastern heroines turn out to be little stunt men in wigs. But fight directors and stuntmen are more important here and better paid than the actors. Though not all these lighter than air men can keep their hair on. <laughs> Rehearsing the violence that's required every other minute in Run Run's merciless movies. One of the heroes throws a sword. Which in the very next scene, the heavy catches, would you believe, in his teeth. He gets very cross. From Run Run, Chinese audiences get no politics, not much sex, but an endless bloodbath of historical violence. A western cowboy can kill a man with one clean bullet, but all these eastern swordsmen require lots of gory slashes. So if there's one thing they use more than wigs, trampolines and wooden swords, it's artificial blood. Bought by the barrel from Japan and distributed lavish. <laughs> Property men have red paint up to the elbows, and as though that wasn't enough, they tie on the walking wounded pig's intestines, which they also paint red. Any chap who's got the chop needs a potful if he's going to be disemboweled in glorious Eastman colour. <laughs> And if you're disemboweled often enough, you can get tired of the whole bloody business. The most important department in movie town, the dubbing theatre, where to a playback of mute action on film, they record the clashing swords, the grunts and groans, the savage sounds you don't hear every day, like heads coming off. Every sound to be heard in the cinema is created here in cold blood. dialogues recorded in Mandarin. So, improbably, Chinese audiences often can't understand what's being said and depend upon subtitles in Cantonese and English which have to be read to be disbelieved. In movie town, a good groaner is never out of a job. Born in Shanghai, Run Run's the prototype of the wily oriental gentleman. Polite, smiling, inhospitable, usually inscrutable and aloof. Since he arrived in Hong Kong in 1961 to create his studio, he's never stopped running. I couldn't get any land. Hong Kong is so short of land. And then I went to the government. The government said, yes, if you want land, you see those are the lands. It's like this. Yeah. It's exactly like this. Yeah. And uh, so I say, all right, let's have one. One what? <laughs> yes, one of this. One mountain. Mountain. <laughs> yes. And so we took 
uh, one mountain, and then we took 60 feet top of the mountain to make these flat pieces here. You chopped the top off? Yes. Yes. And then we started to build a good studio. It was quite a gamble. We made two first films, cost us five million Hong Kong dollars, which is about 300,000 pounds, I think. And to our satisfaction, people came to the theater and feel happy to see the Chinese movie. And then we started to put on more stages and more of everything. Of course, when we first started, we were so short of technicians. Well, Chinese, they are hardworking, they're intelligent, and in no time, they learn all the tricks. This gave us a lot of confidence that quality movie will pay. You talk about quality films, but of course, by any other standards, your films are incredibly economic, are they not? They're, they're very cheaply produced. Not cheaply produced, because the labor here, compared with your part of the world, is much cheaper. If you look around our studio, you see our settings are very expensively built. The same setting, if it is built in the studios in your country, then it may cost 10, 20, or 50 times, I don't know. Your films have often been criticized as uh, bloodthirsty pot boilers. The formula so far has been no sex, but lots of blood and sadism. Now, is this a Chinese appreciation of entertainment? Chinese? I, I think that the, uh, the youngsters all over the world, they like sex. And the Chinese cannot be uh, exceptions. But being in this part of the world, we have certain restrictions. Your audience would be shocked by sex. Yes. But they're not shocked by an entrails being pulled out. Uh, I agree. I, I think that's, that is uh, the feeling at least I know. So it's strange that cinema audiences are falling off everywhere in the world, except, it seems, for your films here in this part of the world. Well, uh, I think uh, in your country, I'm just making comparison. You have uh, so many things to do. You can drive out, you can have a water skiing, plenty of concerts, dancing halls to go, while in this part of the world, there are less places to go. And the only place that they can get entertained is the cinema. What about good old television? Well, for Hong Kong, the, uh, the accommodations are so expensive. People cannot afford to have big rooms for their accommodation. And television occupies quite space in the room. So they, they have not enough space to put in their television set. People go to the cinemas. Uh, they either want to be to get excited or to to be amused. Um, so uh, there you are. We we have to uh, give some kind of excitement. <laughs> In order to give it a change, we inject some fantasy things in the movie. But do you reach a point where they'll accept it no longer, where they'll laugh at it? Well, anything new in the movie, they like to see. Like everything else, if you give them too much, then they get tired. But, I mean, they will accept that a woman can fly. Well, in the Chinese books, thousands of volumes, they describe the man can fly and jump, so we follow the books. But there's no point when the audience starts laughing, which is a very corrosive thing. Well, if you are overdoing, they can fly 10 feet, 20 feet, but when you start with 100 feet high, then it's become impossible and the people <laughs> laugh. That's impossible, I see. 50 feet's all right. <laughs> What about your stars? Once you've created them, do they ever become temperamental and prima donnaish? You see, sometimes they're working, what, 10 or 12 hours a day? Not sometimes, or most of the time. <laughs> Everybody is busy. Yeah. They got to work. This is the business. Everybody got to work. 
And how many films would they make a year, one of your stars? Well, well they make between four to six. Each year? Each year. They, sometimes they make three films at the same time and to do two shifts, day and the night. Midnight in movie town, but within each studio, the Shaw machine grinds on. Sunlight floods this romanticized setting of old China as the night shift takes over. If Run Run has a recipe for success, it's plenty of mileage out of everything and everybody, and direct autocratic dealing with staff and artists. No unions or agents intervene, and there's no special treatment for stars. Leading actors get no chairs with their names on the backs, and should they be late on set, they're sacked. There are no strong unions to insist that several men do one man's job, and at night only performers get a lie down. In the studio next door, starlets pursue a more usual activity. The difficult bits performed, of course, by those creepy little stunt men in wigs, doubling for the actresses. <laughs> In Run Run's movies, there's no limit to the things that can happen to a girl. Have you ever had to fire one of your stars? Of course, they are no good ones. So we have to replace those no good ones with good ones. Ones that weren't satisfactory in their acting ability. What about other, other reasons for being fired? Oh yes, of course. We want uh, them to live normally. They, if tomorrow there's a shooting day, we want them to go to bed a little earlier so that uh, they can work uh, better if they go out to a nightclub and stay late. Next morning they come back to work, they were a little red in the eyes, the, the color film exaggerates and the little red become very red. So we have to warn them not to do it and if, you, if they don't want to listen then we change them. You're also concerned, I believe, about their moral probity, are you not? You expect yes. your, your young girls to be chaperoned and so on? Of course we do, but uh, uh, we can do so much and no more. But if you have them living in the dormitories here, you have much more control over them, of course. Yes, of course. They, we know their movement, the, the time they leave the dormitory, the time they come back. And if they go out too much, we ask questions. Really? Yes. Yeah. But how do you know? Your gateman checks their time. No, departure. there's uh, every building, a dormitory building, there's one supervisor. And uh, uh, we uh, watch. 
What other limitations would you put upon their the private lives? Well, if they are working, it's very strict. If they are not working, we uh, relax. Run Run constantly recruits unknowns. To maintain his stable of 82 actors and 38 actresses, most of them living in rather basic dormitories. Today, for our benefit, no doubt, Betty Lee Cheng uses the showplace flat. Faces known throughout Asia, actresses mobbed in Hong Kong streets may be earning only a few pounds for their 60-hour week. But such is the glamour of this unreal world that throughout Southeast Asia, many thousands long to share their confinement, their studio cars. Run Run stars need looks to suit Oriental tastes, but acting ability is unimportant. Every line they speak will be dubbed by someone else, all that leaping about doubled by stunt men. They'll learn to flash their eyes in close-up, to wield a plywood sword, and go into a chaste clinch with an equally wooden hero. They'll be hard up and harassed, but famous and loved by millions. Even interviewed, like Betty Tsing Pei, by visiting television men. There's only a lightweight pot of gold at the end of Run Run's rainbow. It's just about every girl's ambition to be a film star, which is what you are. How did it happen? Uh, I was a uh, student at the time. And uh, I make, you know, I work for film and to be an actress, just part-time job. And then I, uh, after I worked for Central Motion Movie Company one year, and then I got a contract uh, was sure about this. And then I decided to come to Hong Kong, you know, to be a professional. Did you have, did you go to acting school? Did you have to learn oh, how no. to act? You didn't? It just no. came naturally? I think so. Ah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Shaw was telling me that he's pretty severe with his, with his starlets. He doesn't like them to keep late hours because their eyes get red. Well... <laughs> <laughs> You haven't done any of these, um, these sword-fighting movies that uh, no. all the other girls do. Yeah. Why not? Can't, can't you fight like any other girl? Well, yes, I can. I can do this in modern film, but, uh, you know, the company think the sword-fighting uh, sword fighting film doesn't suit me. And I don't like myself. So I do a most uh, comedy musical film. You sing, do you, and that sort of thing? Yeah, I do. Do they use your own voice in your films, or are you dubbed by someone else? Uh, dubbed. Are you? Yeah. D uh, isn't that a pity? Aren't you sorry about that? No. I want to die wait. Really? Mm. How many films do you make a year, incidentally? Four films, a year. Four. What about love and, and sex in films? Do you, do you have any sex in your films? Uh, yes, not much. Oh. Not How? like the European films. How far can you go? How far? Pajamas? <laughs> no topless. No. <laughs> Non-permissive Chinese audiences like their stars young. So the luckiest, most talented of these hopefuls, selected from thousands for free training, will be a has-been by the time she's 25. Four years at drama school wouldn't help. By graduation, they'd be over age. I want to be a TV star. Do you? <laughs> <laughs> not, not an actress. Well, not an actress in Hong Kong. Oh, why I mean, not? European. Oh, I wish I can be a good actress. Yes. You, you might be taken under contract by the, by the shore people. Might be, if my uh, result is going to be good. I hope to be a best actress. Um, yes. Movie star. A movie star. Yes. What I'll do you think continue. about the shore movies, incidentally? What about all this sword play and the fighting? Do you like them? Very much. Very do you? Much. All that blood, but all that blood, yeah. people's heads being chopped off. Bloody smell, I like it. <laughs> it's exciting. I like, it. I like bloody smell, very exciting. I don't understand this because you're supposed to be delicate, fragile little girls. How can you like all this, people having their stomachs opened up and their heads chopped off? I don't know. See, it gives us um, excitement. excitement. Does it? D does it excite you, Monica? Yes, <laughs> very much. I'm a bit disappointed in you, lot. Come to here. Do you like? Do you like all this bloody, all this blood and thunder? Yes. Um, no, I don't like it. You don't. It makes me um, feel sick. Sick. Yes. Me, me too. <laughs> <laughs> no. Hey! 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 H
Most popular Chinese actor today is an ex-stuntman, a sort of oriental swordsman's James Bond, created by and contracted to Run Run, David Chang. Uh, I can say we don't got lots of money, but we earn enough. And uh, even not a loss of money, but we enjoy the work. Yes. If, you got, if I said you got around a thousand pounds a picture, might that be fair? Would that be accurate? Well, I think so. About a thousand pounds yeah, a picture? Around a thousand pounds a picture. How many pictures would you do a year? Around uh, four to five or six. I see. So the very top star then would get 5,000 pounds a year for the kind of audience that you attract. I mean, you've got a tremendous following. That doesn't seem a lot of money to me. How many hours do you do a day normally? Around 10 hours. 10 hours. And 10. how many days a week? Well, let's take uh, uh, 330 days a year. Around. Really? Yes. Last year, I counted already. <laughs> Last year, I make 330 days a year. Now, some of the actors I see work at night as well. They have a second shift. Yeah, sometimes they make two, pic two, I mean, two different pictures in a day. They have to make 20 hours. They only take four hours left, and then work again. Wouldn't you rather have a nice, safe job in an office? I don't think so. When you became an actor, what did you find was the most difficult thing? Well, you know, before I was a stuntman, I just to be uh, was killed so many times. And change when I'm an actor, the most different thing is I kill a lot. Instead of being killed, you're killing other people. Yes, except uh, being killed. Yeah, I kill a lot of people. Which is best? Well, <laughs> I think uh, being killed is bad. Being killed? Yeah. Because last year, I've been killed around five to six times. Every time I got two dollars, lucky money. Two dollars Hong Kong, lucky money. That's why I like to be killed. <laughs> what about your brother, now, Paul? Yes. Are you a hero or a villain? A uh, hero. You're a hero too, yes. so you win as well. Yes. <laughs> but uh, not all the time, you know, but we usually win, you know, but uh, well, sometimes we, 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 we lose and we got killed at the end of the pic picture. Oh, you got killed? Well, sometimes, yes. Well, I've I never yeah. seen that one because in the, in the movies I see, the heroes don't even lose a single battle. I mean, you have about 30 people fighting you and you, you handle them very easily. <laughs> you see, you have so much blood and guts in it, don't you? It's, everybody's bleeding, the entrails are coming out and their heads are coming off and they're being chopped, chopped up. Uh, I think it's too much for Western taste, don't you see? Well, me also, I can't take it because we're making this because of um, we, our Chinese audience, they like to see it. Why are they so bloodthirsty, the Chinese? Well, not because they're so, I mean, <laughs> bloodthirsty, right? But um, they all like to see the hero kill lots of people. Because uh, for the Oriental people, uh, including Hong Kong, Hong Kong people and the Taiwan people and any, any other places, those people they are living a very unsteady life, you know, and uh, they are looking looking for excitement. They are seeking for money and all this, you know. They rush for money. They are working, working, you know. Yes. And after they work, I think they are very much. Uh, looking for for the excitement, you know. Yeah. So they, uh, if they are uh, go, you know, paying paying a little money and go to the cinema and see the picture, they well, they love to see all this excitement, you know, bleeding and uh, you know, like like you just said, you know, cutting off the head or something like this, you know. Yeah. But what about love or or sex or music or singing or happiness? What about that sort of old-fashioned stuff? Well, but not nowadays, you know. I mean, people. Uh, the audience, they now the audience now they, they don't appreciate you know these kind of films, no not anymore. They are rather they rather like the they are so fighting films you know. Just blood. Uh, well, I guess you can say that again. <laughs> I think so. Run Run's built a monolithic mansion inside his movie town compound, so he can oversee his empire and be safe from kidnappers. His two barrister sons were snatched, one ransomed for a large sum, the other escaping from the gang's car. But so far, no reckless gangsters risked a go at Run Run.
When I was in Singapore many years ago, 10 years ago, when the kidnapping business was very serious, I uh, had my car well fixed, like electrical shock. Um, I had uh, a wireless uh, siren, and I have another electric siren. I, once I press the button in the car, then the siren will make plenty of noise, and anybody touches the car, he, he will get the shock. I've seen it said that you personally are, are worth more than 20 million pounds. I cannot tell you how much I worth. In fact, I don't know. But I never worry about uh, money. And uh, I, all I know is I have enough to feed my children, my grandchildren, and the great-grandchildren. Do you have any interest outside the movie business? Yes. I have a lot of other businesses, real estate, banking, and uh, other businesses. Well, that's all money again. I was really thinking something outside the financial field. Well, it's somehow or other it's uh, tying with my business. Uh, we have printing businesses. We have uh, we do the uh, we publish magazines. We print our own tickets. We have so many theaters. We have a chain of 141 theaters that we own. So uh, we need all those subsidiary companies to keep our theatre going. But if you'd ever take a holiday, what would you do? Well, I enjoyed one or two days, and after one or two days I felt miserable. I want to come back and do something. You want to be back in the mill again? Well, it is always <laughs> uh, a pleasure to work. What sort of films do you prefer yourself, incidentally? Well, I like uh, artistic films and uh, light, um, but my liking is uh, uh, not all is to it, uh, what the people want, that's wh what I'm trying to do. So we follow the trend. If they like action pictures, we make all action pictures, but we want to be prepared. So we make pilot films, a comedy, a drama, a James Bond type of modern action pictures, and so forth. And those pictures, sometimes, the public never want. That went wrong. The experiments are wrong. Yes. But when we make the films that the public want, cannot go wrong. Talking about the films that, that, uh, that don't go down too well, the critics aren't always very pleased with your films, and I see that this weekend there's been a review of your latest Vengeance of a Snowbird that's showing at 12 cinemas here in Hong Kong, and the critics said it's the silliest film released in many years. Well, uh, I don't think the public uh, go to a movie uh, after they uh, read the uh, critics. You've abolished or at least you've downgraded the star system. You don't have anything like a private dressing room for your stars. There's no secret in this business. Once you have to depend on the stars, then it becomes a headache, and you will have troubles from the stars all the time. And so we plan in such a way that we don't depend on star too much. And after all, the trend today is that the picture that is what one is wanted, not the star. If a big star in a poor picture, it will not sell a ticket. And if a good picture without star, it will do good business, just the same. I don't like to have some special treatment for a special star. After all, everybody is working the same way. Why should we treat one better than the others? But you, you want to keep them humble. Well, I think this is uh, usually the, 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 the Chinese way. We are a humble race. Please, is it? Hello. Hey. Hey.
This powerful member of that humble race plans to invade Western cinemas with his hundreds of Easterns, which are not all Chinese junk. They're stylized, technically good, and as you've seen, full of fight. Hiya, hiya. Oh. Uh, one day, maybe you people begin to like to see Chinese sword play films. Then we have another few hundred million uh, people. That's true, yes. You, you've already got cinemas in uh, the United States, and you're thinking of opening one in London, I gather. Yes, we like to uh, open theatres in all the key spots all over the world and to introduce Chinese films. The point is, do you think you're ready for Run Run's movies? Bear in mind, this is one of the gentle ones. Yeah. <laughs> 